This video is made possible by Squarespace. Y'all, I'm on vacation here in England, which of course means that the environmental assessment has finally been released. In case you haven't heard, the result is a mitigated Fonzie. But what does that mean? And when can we expect Starship to fly its first orbital test flight out of Boca Chica? We'll break it all down for you starting right now. For added fun, drink every time I use the word environmental. First up, let's talk about the outcome. It's a mitigated Fonzie. There were four possible outcomes today. One, the FAA could have announced another delay. Two, the FAA could have required what's called an EIS, or Environmental Impact Statement. This could take a year or more and is a detailed study of all the environmental impacts of a proposed action. Three, the FAA could have issued a FONSI, or Finding of No Significant Impact. That basically just means that they found that there's no significant impacts and SpaceX can do whatever they want. Or the fourth option, what the FAA actually did, was issue a mitigated FONSI, which means their finding of no significant impact stands, but there are certain issues that need to be, you guessed it, mitigated for SpaceX to launch out of Starbase Boca Chica. Given the extremely broad scope of SpaceX's proposed build-out of the Boca Chica facilities, a mitigated FONSI is perhaps the best possible outcome, and where the smart money has been for quite some time now. A full environmental impact statement would have taken forever, and a plain old Fonzie seems like it would have been virtually impossible given the massive differences between Falcon Heavy and Starship. SpaceX has thus far been operating under parameters based on a Falcon Heavy launching from Starbase Boca, and a Starship full stack is significantly more thrust, more propellant, more noise, and in the worst case scenario, could pack a significantly bigger punch if things went wrong. So. What are the mitigations, and how long do we think it'll take until we see a Starship launching Starlink satellites out of Boca Chica? My guess? About two weeks. Just kidding. It's hard to say exactly how long it'll take, but in the ballpark of a couple months seems reasonable. Before we talk about the specific mitigations the FAA has asked for, though, let's talk about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. If you want to mitigate, see what I did there, the risk of having a cruddy looking website, then Squarespace is exactly what you need. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your online presence or business, with tons of great-looking designs that are easy to customize just to your liking. With Squarespace, you don't have to empty your bank account and hire a web designer to have a website that looks like you did. I set up my website as an online portfolio, as well as a place to sell prints of my photos. Squarespace makes it remarkably easy to set up an online store or collect donations to your cause. So easy, in fact, that a simple-minded Sasquatch such as myself had no problem doing it. You can even connect your various social media accounts to your website so that when you tweet something snarky or post something cool on Instagram, it shows up how and where you want it to, so you don't have to go in and cross-post it yourself. And of course, they have excellent and excellent looking analytics to help you figure out what's working and what isn't. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash NASA spaceflight to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's get into the mitigations. There are 10 major areas where SpaceX, in accordance with the FAA, will need to mitigate and monitor the effects of operations at Boca Chica. Areas where mitigations will be needed include air quality, noise pollution, light pollution, cultural resources like historical markers and landmarks, transportation, water usage, plant and animal life, land usage, hazardous materials, and overall social well-being. The major area of mitigation will be biological resources, meaning plants and animals. SpaceX will be required to do things like build a wildlife crossing, have a biologist on staff to ensure there are minimal effects on wildlife, and monitor their light emissions, especially during sea turtle nesting season which begins on March 15. SpaceX would also be responsible for funding measures around the Starbase facility that would prevent vehicles from entering the wetlands. Finally, SpaceX would need to make annual contributions to wildlife funds and agencies, as well as do quarterly litter cleanups of Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach. In addition to wildlife, SpaceX would need to closely monitor their impact on the wetlands, groundwater, historical landmarks, and more. They'll have to be more informative about road closures and beach closures, and limit the amount that they restrict access. Notably, they will also have to fund restoration of wetland areas damaged by and during the recovery of Starship SN11's explosion. This may already sound like a lot, but there's also the potential for lawsuits to hold things up as well. And on top of that, once any legal challenges are out of the way, and once mitigations have been completed, SpaceX still needs to get a launch license from the FAA, which is an entire process unto itself and takes its own time. First off, they still plan to build a second orbital pad, known as Pad B. And 
it would be located just south of the existing pad known as Pad A and have its own independent integration tower and tank farm. Just to the west of Orbital Pad B's tank farm would be a second landing pad, similar in size and shape to the already built one. They also plan to build a payload processing facility to integrate payloads into Starship. The exact details are not finalized, but it may be up to 240 feet tall, around the same height as the high bay. Other activities are planned, including expanding the solar farm and building three pull-offs on Highway 4 to let traffic wait for vehicle transporters to move by and mitigate the need to close the road entirely. That may not seem like much to do, but there's also potential lawsuits that can hold things up along the way. And on top of that, once any legal challenges are out of the way, and once all the mitigations have been completed, SpaceX still needs to get a launch license from the FAA, which is an entire process unto itself and takes its own time. Mitigations, legal challenges, and the launch license can all be worked in parallel, so it's hard to say what the long pull will end up being. But those are now the final remaining hurdles to a Starship full-stack launch. Oh yeah, and hardware readiness. That's kind of important. The focus for Boca Chica appears to have shifted. Or maybe it was just always this way and we never realized it from a fully operational spaceport to a much more limited research, development, and testing facility. By limiting the number of launches and the scope of operations in Starbase Boca, SpaceX can get to orbit faster than if they went immediately for the whole hog and tried to build out their Texas facilities for the full scope they initially proposed. That is, get to orbit as fast as possible with a minimal viable product. SpaceX will get Starbase operational as quickly as they can, with the minimum amount of bells and whistles. No power plant, no desalination plant, no whatever else. SpaceX really doesn't want to blow up all of their historic Pad 39A infrastructure with a Starship full stack falling back onto the pad just after launch, or even worse, detonating on the pad like Amos 6. Though it may change in the future, right now 39A is the only facility SpaceX can launch Falcon Heavy and crewed flights from. Not to mention the fact that NASA is understandably protective of not only that capability, but the hallowed ground that is 39A as a whole. This is where Starbase Boca Chica comes in. If SpaceX nukes the orbital launch pad on Starship's first orbital launch attempt, it would pale in comparison to the same thing occurring at Pad 39A. So, by the time SpaceX is able to complete the required mitigations and get a couple of Starship test launches out of Boca Chica, Starbase Kennedy will be coming along and ready to support operational missions. With the added insurance of all the potential issues having been worked out at the lower risk levels in Starbase Boca Chica. So, given all of that, how close are we to a Starship orbital test flight? Well, remember earlier I mentioned hardware readiness? SpaceX still needs to get Booster 7 out to the launch site for static fire testing. That testing will take time, as will the static fire campaign for Ship 24, even if they truncate the test program and only do the bare bones of what is needed for launch. The general flow towards orbital test flight will be something along the lines of roll Booster 7 to the pad, cryogenically test it, and static fire it. The static fires are expected to be incremental, starting with a subset of Booster 7's 33 engines and working up step by step to a full 33 engine static fire. At any point along the way, the booster could either be ruled obsolete due to something breaking or data gathered during testing. But if B7 gets over all these hurdles, then it'll be ready for Ship 24. Speaking of, Ship 24 is currently getting worked on in the high bay and it also needs to roll the pad. We presume it's having engines installed after successful proof testing. It should also have its own static fire testing campaign. It's hard to say if SpaceX will just go right to a full 6 engine static fire with Ship 24, or if they'll work up to that incrementally as we expect with the booster. Once both Ship and Booster have been static fire tested, Ship 24 will be stacked on top of Booster 7, and more testing will be done, presumably including a full wet dress rehearsal, where the entire stack is fully fueled with propellants and a mock countdown all the way to just before engine ignition will be conducted. There might even be booster static fires with a ship stacked on top. After all of this is done, then Starship will be ready for its first orbital test flight. There is a lot going on in the environmental assessment beyond what we can cover here in just one video, including the FAA's responses to all the public comments. Be sure to stay tuned as we digest everything further, and if you can't wait for more environmental assessment content, check out our 5 hour livestream where we picked out each individual mitigation and discuss them in detail. We'll put the link in the description. Thanks for watching and thanks to all our members. Alright, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.